Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for all joining us, joining me here today. I want to uh, thank all those that drove up here to Sacramento uh, to talk about, uh, in my humble opinion, about the greatest challenge facing mankind, and that's water security. You see, water security means so much more than just water. Water security is a human security issue. For my parents, who are immigrants from Mexico, it meant jobs and the ability to give back to their communities, nutritious meals through their hard work. It also meant that they had a shot at life. They left Mexico during a drought. They didn't have much to eat during that time, and the jobs weren't available. They were really struggling. Sadly, today, the scenario is playing out once again, except it's not in Mexico. It's in the world's sixth largest economy, which is the state of California. We are seeing farm workers that are going without jobs. We are seeing farmers that are struggling every day more and more to provide us with the nutritious food that we all need. And these are the impacts of poor water management in the state of California. They threaten the safety and well-being of all people. And more concerning, it threatens our own existence. I want to really say that again. Poor water management in California threatens our very own existence. We know that water insecurity can and will lead to social disruption if left unfixed. This is why we need to act with urgency and unity. Water security also means having more tools in the toolbox. We need those tools right now. Yes, we can blame climate change and this drought for having less water today. But let's be honest. Water has been managed so poorly that communities now have to be allotted water for health and safety as cuts are made across the state. This is California, the world's, the state with the sixth largest economy in the world, and we are providing communities with just enough water to meet their health and safety. We can do better because, because California's water crisis could be a global food crisis, one that could have been avoided had we just invested in our water infrastructure. Unfortunately, we cannot go back in time and invest. All we can do is invest in, in this water infrastructure today. We have broken canals in the state of California. We know that. But until full repairs are made, we will continue to lose way too much precious water as it travels through the canals, water we cannot afford to lose in this climate. Which is why we need to fully fund the repair of these canals. Funding these repairs will help our state save water when we do get rain and move water without losing so much of it. California has another historical surplus and investments in our water future must be made now. Human life is unimaginable without water. So I urge the governor and my colleagues to invest and repair our broken water infrastructure today. Thank you so much. I, at this moment, I want to open it up to um, our next speaker, who is uh, Jasbir Singh Sidhu of the Punjabi American Growers Group, and he's here to speak a little bit about the impacts. Uh, thank, thanks, Melissa. Uh, yeah, my name is Jasbir Singh Sidhu. I represent PUG, Punjabi American Growers Group. That's a farming community in the Central Valley. Uh, we're here to talk about the great impact of sigma and water. As we all understand, our natural precious resource of water, uh, something has to be done. So in 2014, when the sigma uh, Sustainable Ground Management Act was passed, it was very much supported by our organization, well as every farmer, uh, to save the water so we don't get into the food security Melissa was talking about. So there was two elements to that. Uh, management included above ground, which is basically the canals, the reservoirs, uh, and in essence, two bonds were passed uh, to get this work done. I doesn't believe it has been started. 
Uh, and so as emergency basis, the executive order that's coming down the pipeline is to cut the pi uh, water down, underground water for the farmers. That has a huge impact, impact on communities, on social. Uh, and, and we are, will be relying on other countries. Uh, we're exporting our food then. I mean, today California is the sixth largest economy, and this economy is the best of class in the world. By having these type of acts coming down on us, taking millions and millions of acres out of production, we are going to have huge impact on the families. Uh, farmers are having to get bigger loans, so they're, as they're higher in debt, they're losing money, and, and as a result of it, uh, there's higher unemployment. It's got a trickle-down effect, unemployment causing school issues and affecting the social web around those communities. So higher crimes and, and so forth. So we're basically asking uh, really our government, our, our legislatures to get together and find a real solution, not just cutting down the water, but also doing some work above the ground until we're able to affect that. Water security is key. I mean, we have seen with apples, we have seen with garlic uh, and Gilroy, once it's gone to China, the price is 10x. And, and that we cannot afford to continue on the path as we're shipping high tech, now we're on a path to ship agriculture to other countries so they could feed us. And, 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 and we see that is a big, big security issue. Other issue that comes in is, in terms of water, our infrastructure was built 70 years ago, supporting around 4 million people at the time. We got 40 million. Our population is growth 10x. Every city is growing. And, and we are paying higher taxes, but in return, none of the work is being done to support this population. The infrastructure is, is dwindling down. It's breaking down as we've seen. Uh, rivers and, and banks and, and dams getting broken uh, without any investment. So we're asking really our government to really think, come to the table to discuss these fundamental issues. If you take millions of acres out of production, we are basically going to be into inhumane situation because there's a lot of species that are underground as farmers are farming, putting water on the ground, they are making these species alive. With one shot, as you take millions of acres out, you're going to take millions of these species, uh, basically within days, they will decimate. They will, they will no longer exist. And, and as we have seen, the water allocations, I mean, 50% of the water is going uh, in the delta to support a fish. We are spending 50% of the water uh, we totally agree with. Every species has to uh, live, but we are at the same time killing millions and millions of them because they're underground, they don't have a voice, they're visible, but they're in everyone's guts, they're on our key food source. So um, as a result of these actions, we're really, really requesting our government, our assembly people, our governor, rethink of the Sigma program as originally was thought to put a hold on it until we're able to come together that we're not impacting food security, we're not impacting social web, we're basically uh, still continue to be a market leader uh, in this segment. Um, so I appreciate for the invite, we have farmers that came with us. Uh, we're fully uh, supporting Melissa and uh, Jim and, and everyone that is representing us in the valley and all the people. We thank them for their support and, and, and we look forward to working a very solution that will benefit all. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And up next, we have uh, John Rubin from the Westlands Water District. Do we have John here? There he is. Good morning. My name is John Rubin, and I'm 
I serve as the Assistant General Manager, General Counsel of the Westlands Water District. I thank Senator Hurtado for her tireless effort to build coalitions and resolve issues of critical importance to the state of California. In 2019, farmers in Westlands grew approximately 5.5% of the country's vegetables and melon crops and approximately 3.5% of the country's fruit and nut crops. The production of that food supported over 35,000 jobs. These numbers highlight the importance of Central Valley project, uh, excuse me, Central Valley agriculture to the region's economy and to the country's domestic food supply. And it's no surprise why the Central Valley's Mediterranean climate and healthy fertile soils make it ripe for growing hundreds of different nutritious crops. However, the Central Valley cannot remain productive without adequate, reliable water supply. As we proceed through this second year of drought, we are once again reminded that to achieve a resilient water supply future, the water resources of this state must be used more efficiently. Investment in infrastructure is necessary. Senate Bill 559 would do just that by funding a share of critical infrastructure repairs to the Delta Mendota Canal, San Luis Canal, Friant Kern Canal, and the California Aqueduct, Senate Bill 559 would improve California's resistance, resilience to climate change. Senate Bill 559 would help make affordable, clean drinking water available to more than 31 million people. Senate Bill 559 would help protect existing jobs and create new jobs. Senate Bill 559 would help restore wetland habitat, and Senate Bill 559 would help support the delivery of water to more than 3 million acres of agricultural land that feed the nation. For all of these reasons, Westland's Water District supports enactment and full funding of Senate Bill 559. Thank you. Thank you. And up next, we have Jacob Villagomez of uh, California Citrus Mutual. Thank you, Senator. Good morning. My name is Jacob Villagomez. I'm here on behalf of the California Citrus uh, Mutual and its citrus grower membership throughout the state of California. Uh, today, much like our consumers, California growers of all commodities, like you heard, uh, continue to be squeezed not only by drought, high prices, lack of supporting infrastructure, which is what we're here talking about today, port congestion, climate change, and even the war between Ukraine and Russia that has skyrocketed pesticide prices. However, also among us to suffer are the farm workers and their families who face not only job loss and a lack of voice providing them with security for a better future. As we continue to find ourselves in dry and intensifying drought, our constituencies cannot wait any longer. Years of siloed or local approaches to solving, a broader water, solving our broader water issues have been unsuccessful. As, our population, as population growth in urban and suburban California drown out uh, the voice of rural California, it is vital for agricultural interests to join in larger and broader coalitions, such as the one you see behind us today, so that we can reach additional legislators, change a couple hearts along the way, and most importantly, provide change to those we serve. That is why CCM is a founding member of the Water Blueprint for the San Joaquin Valley, which is an effort to find common ground within the region when it comes to bringing more water to the Central Valley and to our communities, and to build support outside the region, and to bring together water districts, agricultural organizations such as ourselves and the ones you see behind me here, and local communities to pro provide a better water outlook, mitigate drought, and provide an updated water system that works for everyone. I would like to close by thanking the good and consistent Senator and her colleagues for once again providing a united front and another push to secure a better water future. Thank you. And up next we have Assemblymember Devin Mathis. We have one of the most vast agricultural regions in the entire world. One in four jobs in the San Joaquin Valley 
is dependent on these water supplies that feed our agriculture system. One in four. And then you double that when you think about the fact that a lot of these people are married in these small communities. You think about those families, and it exponentially gets larger. Without the resources from 559, it's not just about our agriculture. It's our communities, our families, our schools, our public safety that are at stake. We have to get this funding. We have to make our communities whole. And I encourage the other people in this building to step up because they talk about how communities of color matter. They talk about how immigrant communities matter. They talk about they want to help schools. They want to help our first responders. They want to help crime rates. In order to do that, we need to do this. We need to secure 559. We need to secure funding to fix our canal system and ensure that we can move water where it's needed most. Thank you. And, and up next, we have Anja uh, Radwal, of the CEO of Western United Dairies. Close. Anya Radaba. Thank you for having me here today. I'm here to speak in ha on behalf of Senator Portado in support of 559, SB559. 85% of all of California's school lunch program comes from south of Fresno County. 70% of the nation's affordable protein comes from Merced County South, and 100% of the world's food bank system is touched by the food grown in the valley. We can't afford any more recreational outrage. We have to have rural community leaders like Senator Hurtado coming to support together solutions that we can all get behind. Regardless of political preference, all of our farmers in the valley live, breathe, and consume the same water as the workers that they stand next to every single day. Our farming community is just that, a community. We stand beside each other and we use the same resources. Water justice is about a holistic solution like SB 559. Thank you for your day. And up next we have Alex Baring of the Bryant Water Authority. Thank you, Senator. Good morning. Um, my name is Alex Beering, and I work for Friant Water Authority, like the Senator said. Um, but I'm also here in part to help represent some of the other coalition members that were uh, the sponsors of 559 and have been working with he Senator Hurtado for at least three years now um, to advocate for funding to fix the canals we operate and pay for, which have all been damaged up by subsidence, as other people have said. Frank Water Authority operates and maintains the Frank Kern Canal, which delivers water to more than a million acres of farmland in the, in the southern San Joaquin Valley and to hundreds of thousands of Californians. Likewise, the California Aqueduct, San Luis Canal, and Delta Mendota Canal deliver water to millions more acres, and together the three canals meet the water needs of about 30 million Californians. The Frank Kern Canal was designed and built for delivering water to farms and cities, but also for groundwater recharge, which is a really unique feature of this particular facility. The canal's bottom third has lost 60% of its conveyance capacity. This means that in wet years, like 2017, we can't use it to bank water for dry years like 2021 and 2022, and the groundwater quality worsens overall. The dozens of the groundwater basins it supports are also the sole sources of water for more than 50 rural, small, or disadvantaged communities, many of whom already lack clean drinking water. If California is committed to meeting its clean drinking water goals in the San Joaquin Valley in Southern California, SB 559 and the funding others have proposed must be successful. Hold on. Two pages again. If California is to achieve its sustainable groundwater management goals under climate change and while minimizing pain to vulnerable communities, these canals must be repaired. Last year, the governor and legislature recognized that and committed $100 million to repair the canals. We were able to break ground on repairs for the Frank Kern Canal this past January, in large part due to the nearly 40 million the state of California has awarded to the project. I, I want to be really clear about that. We would not have been able to start this project if we had not received the funding that Senator Hurtado advocated for last year and was included in the budget. The governor proposed a similar outlay for the canals in this year's budget, but the need is still much greater. With another budget windfall this year, California has the chance to make an additional one-time investment that will help repair our arterial water infrastructure as quickly as possible. Thank you to Senator Hurtado and her colleagues in the Senate and the Assembly, as well as the Governor, DWR, 
Director Carla Namath, who's been amazing to work with in making sure that we receive these funds as quickly as possible, Secretary Crowfoot and all of their staff for recognizing the, the opportunity we have this year to fund conveyance improvements and hopefully we'll continue to support that important work. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Up next, we have Assemblymember Jim Patterson. Is he here? <laughs> Thank you, Senator. Um, imagine if you are a farm worker who for 20 years or more have been part of growing, harvesting, and getting crops to the marketplace. And you live in one of the small agricultural towns up and down the valley. And you go to your kitchen and you turn on the tap and water doesn't come out. That is the reality of far too many of our farm workers who are the backbone of the economy that comes from our valley. Imagine if you are the grower that employs that farm worker and you have acre upon acre of quality crops needing water and yet the allocation is zero, nothing, and the crops may very well have to be fallowed. That is the reality of Central California today, unless we take this remarkable opportunity with a $68 billion surplus to take some of that money and put it into the maintenance of these canals so that when the water is in our reservoirs and we turn on the flow, it gets to the people and the farms and the produce that we so desperately need. This is a no-brainer and should be supported across the aisle and in every executive suite in the California governor's office. That's what we're calling for and that's what we expect to take place. Nothing short of that is acceptable. Thank you, Jim. Up next, we have Emily Rooney of the Agricultural Council of California. Good morning. Thank you, Senator Hurtado. On behalf of 15,000 farmer families of Agricultural Council of California, we extend a heartfelt thank you to Senator Hurtado for initiating this effort, and a thank you to Governor Newsom for his previous and proposed investments to repair the critical infrastructure at the Fry and Kurt Canal, the Delta Mendota Canal, the California Aqueduct, to better provide for the future of our families, our farms, and the environment. The funding for this project is vital because it not only delivers water that is critically needed for the families of the Central Valley, but it all, it's also one piece of a very complex puzzle that demonstrates the state action in investing in infrastructure as we continue to build climate resiliency. More work needs to be done, and this is a step in the right direction. But we must not delay in taking action this year. We all know our state's economy is cyclical, and we have a small window of opportunity right now to fund these types of projects. Now is the time to act before the surplus of general fund dollars is gone. So we are here together urging the legislature to drive home the importance of including $300 million in funding for the 2022-2023 state budget. I'd like to also wrap up my comments with the recognition that this suite of projects comes as a bipartisan request. At a time when politics can be painfully difficult, we have a project that benefits all, and that is reflected by the political diversity here today. So thanks to all of the elected officials from all sides for supporting this project. It's all hands on deck when we're trying to address some of the climate and infrastructure challenges in our state. And I'm glad to see us all here today to urge the legislature to provide $300 million for these vital projects and repairs in the state budget. Thank you very much. I also have here with me um, the uh, president of the California Farm Bureau, and I'm going to invite him up to speak if he'd like to share a few words. 
I'll be brief. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Jamie Johansson, President of the California Farm Bureau, representing over 30,000 uh, farm families uh, across California from Imperial up to uh, Siskiyou County. I want to thank the Senator for her leadership on, on these water issues and infrastructure, not just for your constituents, but for the state of California. And your voice was important last year. Uh, as we began the discussions of fixing the Frank Kern Canal, and of course SB 559 uh, with $300 million, and hopefully uh, this will serve as a, a reminder that $785 million would be nice as well. Uh, uh, we'll do that. But the Frank Kern Canal is an important uh, canal to look at, at the, what infrastru water infrastructure means to all of California, not just farmers. It's the center point because it delivers over a million acres uh, of water, uh, delivers water to over a million acres of farmland, but also 250,000 residents in Kern and Tulare counties. So everyone benefits from water infrastructure in California when we invest in it. We've talked a lot about water predictability. Let's be clear, water predictability, I'm sorry, water security. Water security only comes when we have a predictable water supply. If we're going to talk about water security, we have to address predictability. And right now in California, we have no predictability as we are seeing yet, yet again. California voters had a wake-up call in 2014 when they passed Prop 1, funding for more storage and our water infrastructure. Yet that message has not translated into concrete actions and more projects. If in this current drought, if this is not a time to act for future needs, when is the appropriate time? And as has been stated here, when you're the sixth largest ag, ag economy in the world, uh, not only just the whole economy, but the ag economy itself, as powerful as we are, when we stop growing it, it isn't replaced by another place in the world. And we will see from this drought, unprecedented uh, following of land. And we're already beginning to hear tough stories in our tomato industry, our feed for our dairy, and also up north in the rice fields as well. It will be an unprecedented year, but now is the time for the wake-up call. Farmers understand drought years, but what we don't understand is a failure to plan. And that's what's occurring right now and why we're going to feel the effects of another drought year. Let's hope that SB 559 and the efforts of Senator Hurtado and the other legislators that are here are the wake-up call that we begin to uh, uh, begin that plan for the next generation that makes California agriculture as important as it is, not only to the country, but also to the world. So thank you, Senator, and the rest of the legislators uh, that are here and my other uh, ag groups uh, speaking up for SB 559. Thank you. Okay, uh, do we have any questions? Any additional comments? Okay, we're gonna get this funded, right? <laughs> See, my name is Makhan Singh from Sacramento, and I am a very small grower in Central Valley by Madeira County. So we see all of our reservoirs and canals, they depend upon the rain, rain water. But if there is no rain, there will be no water in the reservoirs, even if we make big reservoirs or more reservoirs. And we should think over why we are not having rain when some, some part they, have, they are having flooding. Uh, in America even. So we should spend some money to find out the problem, why we, we are not having rain when we are we were having very heavy rain before. For a few years, drought, drought had caused this problem, the water shortage. It's not for the farming, it is also for the people living in the houses too. So we should think over any means how we can have more rains. Artificial rain could be an, another alternative. We should think over it and we should research on it if we can have artificial rain when we have no rains or low rains. Okay, thank you very much. Well, thank you everybody for joining us and that wraps up our press conference today. Thank you.